non-surgical treatment of low back pain. Low back pain is common. It affects both sexes, all age groups, all ethnic groups, and socioeconomic classes. Although low back pain may occur in all age groups, individuals between 35 and 55 years old are most commonly affected. In acute low back pain, about 90% of patients return to work within 12 weeks, and after 12 weeks of symptoms, return to work is typically slow. Most of the patients recover quickly without any residual problems. In chronic low back pain, you will have variability in the outcome rather than predictability and stability of the condition. Low back pain is two types, acute and chronic. Acute up till three months and chronic more than three months. The natural history and the treatment of acute and chronic low back pain differ. It is unknown why acute low back pain becomes chronic. In chronic low back pain, there will be lack of progress towards recovery despite adequate treatment, especially if no specific diagnosis is present. Mild or chronic low back pain may not have any impact on the patient's function. If the patient has low back pain, it doesn't mean that the patient have a bad outcome because a lot of patients will continue to have mild back pain or discomfort for many months, even after seeing the doctor and receiving the appropriate treatment. Chronic low back pain symptoms can occur in about 5% of the patients. In chronic back pain patients, there may be changes in the central neuromodulation of pain. Patients with chronic low back pain may suffer from a sleep disturbance, which may be related to depression, and antidepressant medications may be helpful. Evaluation of the patient may differ depending on the cause of the pain. There are some conditions that will need further investigation, such as fracture, possible tumor, and possible infection of the spine. So what is the treatment of low back pain? In acute low back pain, there will be improvement within the first months regardless of the treatment. Selecting the method of treatment is challenging. In general, non-surgical treatment is done for the patient usually before the diagnosis is established. If you don't know the cause of the low back pain, then you direct the treatment at reducing the pain and increasing the patient's function. No matter what the cause is, except in cases of coda equina syndrome, which should be diagnosed by an MRI urgently and treated urgently by surgery. So the first question you need to ask a patient with low back pain do you have bladder or bowel problems? And if the patient has bladder or bowel problems, then this can be called the Aquina syndrome. And non-surgical treatment is contraindication. You do not treat this patient without surgery. Get an MRI immediately and check for central disc herniation. The disc is usually herniated in the middle of the spinal canal compressing many nerve roots and affecting the bladder and the bowel function. In this case, you need to do surgery urgently so that the bladder function can recover. There are a variety of non-surgical treatment modalities that are available. The majority are moderately effective, but not a single treatment option appears to be superior. That's why selecting the proper treatment can be challenging. In general, usually a combination of treatment options are better than a single treatment option. So what are the treatment options? Patient education. The patients with low back pain should not embrace beliefs which may interfere with recovery. You want to get the patient involved in their care. The patient should know about the favorable natural history and the outcome of the treatment of low back pain. 
If patient should understand motion of the spine between the vertebrae and the discs, the patient should learn the correct posture, the correct position of the spine, and should learn the proper way to lift weight. Patient should also learn the positions of the spine that will increase the intravertebral disc pressure. Sitting and leaning forward and carrying weight produces the highest pressure on the intervertebral discs. Medications. Medications can be anti-inflammatory medications, which the patient should learn about the side effects of these medications. Also, that medication can be muscle relaxant and antidepressant, which may be used in chronic cases. The muscle relaxant is beneficial if used in a short-term basis in acute low back pain, and usually it is used in combination with anti-inflammatory medication and be aware of the drowsiness, so use it at bedtime. The antidepressant medication will improve the mood of the patient. Oral steroids. It is effective and safe in patients with sciatica. Low-dose oral steroids can be used for a short period of time. Topical analgesics can be used in the form of cream, heating pads, or adhesive lidocaine patches. Activity modification. Avoid painful activities until acute symptoms resolve. Most of the studies will support activity modification, but not immobilization. Bed rest is harmful to the patient. The best treatment for patients with low back pain is to be active. An active patient will recover faster than an inactive patient. Physical therapy can be passive, such as shortwave ultrasound, or cold packs, which decreases the inflammation, or heat therapy, which relaxes the muscles, usually used after two weeks. Cardiovascular and aerobic exercises will help to improve the mood of the patient, prevent deconditioning, and can be done early in acute low back pain. Working on the spine, the trunk and the muscles of the back are recommended in chronic low back pain. Spine manipulation is very popular and it is done by osteopathic and chiropractic teams. There is evidence that spine manipulation is beneficial within the first six weeks. Combining spine manipulation with other treatment modalities may be more beneficial than manipulation alone. Traction and pleurotherapy. There is no evidence that traction or pleurotherapy have any benefit. SI joint injections are not indicated in low back pain unless you think the patient may have an SI joint dysfunction. Orthosis have no value in acute or chronic low back pain. There are proprioceptive reminders to use the correct spine mechanics during lifting or bending activities. Acupuncture may be considered as part of a comprehensive management program in select group of patients with chronic low back pain. Cognitive behavioral therapy. This therapy is intended to enhance treatment by addressing the cognitive negative emotion and thoughts and behavioral altered activity and medication dependence aspect of chronic pain. The quality of life improves and the medication dependency decreases with this multi-dimension program which is used for chronic low back pain. Other injections. Facet injection is helpful in chronic low back pain. Trigger point injection is helpful in myofascial pain syndrome. The epidural injection, helpful in chronic low back pain in the short term, but has a limited value in the long term. Transforaminal injection is helpful in patients with radicular symptoms. In making this video, 
I used my own personal experience and multiple references. And one of the best references I found is the article by the title Non-Surgical Management of Acute and Chronic Low Back Pain. And this article is referenced here. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.